land, water, and forest resources uh, meeting to order. Are we uh, are we live? We have roll call, please. Jesse Betcher here. Ed Peters here. Jason Weaver. <laughs> Brian Bizanet. Mark Heller here. Kevin Shepton here. You have a quorum. Okay, please rise for the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are we in uh, compliance with open meeting? Well, this meeting has been noticed to the public and this meeting is required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, public comments. I don't have any forms up here. Is anybody in the room wishing to make any public comments? Is no there? It's online. Oh, Brian didn't just joined. Okay, welcome, Brian. We're just doing public comments. Uh, we don't have anybody in the room or online <clears throat> for public comments, so we'll move on to number six. Consider approval of minutes from last month's meeting. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Mr. Helwig and a second by Mr. Peters for the approval of the February minutes. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Uh, number seven, events, discussion, possible action? Uh, none for this month. Okay. Number eight, land records and county surveyor department report. Yeah, I don't have much to report. Um, life is normal. The survey crew is still struggling to get anything done with the still yet. Yeah. Couple projects, Winter and Ojibwa and Draper, just waiting for the snow to go away now. Okay. Would you say that we are like that you are behind schedule compared to other years, or are we going to be able to um, be okay? We're every year is different. I guess we are probably because of the weather, we are probably behind, but it's as much to do with staffing as anything to. Okay. <clears throat> Number nine, uh, Forestry Department, letter 9A, uh, Recreational Trails Report, motorized. Kathy? Um, it's been an extremely busy winter, snowmobiling, and it's been up and down. We've had, obviously, you all know of the storms and the different conditions we've had. Um, all the trails are, are open. They're all being groomed. Uh, a couple of us have been out assessing uh, brushing needs and signage needs because we're still dealing with some of the storm damage and residual damage from that. So we're getting uh, compiling lists and hiring people to do do the work and aware of all that, obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> that's about that's about it. I I do have the counters out there. I have not had time to put together reports. Um, I I've just been swamped. It's mm -hmm. it's just been a busy year, so it's intense. When you say hiring people, how who pays? For well, um, some of the brushing and and uh, you know we do a lot of hand brushing, but we also hire. It makes more sense to hire contractors to help with some of the brushing when you have substantial storm damage and the funding for that to pay for that comes from from where dnr okay what's the uh you said all trails are open but what's the condition of the the lake ice right now actually i've been trying to compile some reports um like up on nelson lake i've had uh 20 inches of good ice which surprises me i um, the flowage, I've heard a couple things. Uh, one ice fisherman I know said there was 16 inches of marginal ice, um, and, but at such a large body of area, yeah. uh, you know, it's a large body of water that uh, I don't know. I mean, the trails um, on the Mark snowmobile trails, everything has been very solid. Okay, good. Uh, any non-motorized representatives in the room? No. Nope. Um, 9B County Forestry Report. Okay, uh, for the month of February, uh, we 
we had 15 sales listed as active. It's been a very busy uh, winter for logging activity. Uh, we're kind of getting to the tail end of it right now, finishing up a lot of these winter access sales. Uh, we're talking before the meeting, you know, there's rumbles of road bands probably going on possibly next week. Uh, we're not sure, but uh, everybody's kind of preparing for that. So we're cleaning up, cleaning up the sales now. Um, sale revenue sold and uncut on file right now is just over four million. Uh, sale revenue in February was four hundred thirty-nine thousand. Uh, year to date, we're at six hundred seventy-five thousand. Um, we did take back uh, two sales. Uh, this month, uh, we did take the performance bond, and that's that $11,000. We still have a couple more that we're processing through right now. Um, that's uh, those 2017 sales that were listed on the report that uh, were, were asked about a month or two ago. So we are processing those and uh, claiming the bonds, and we'll be re-advertising those in the coming year. Uh, Timber sale build out right now is just under 150,000. Uh, sale inspections are on target for our level of activity. Uh, we did have six tracks uh, written up and turned in. Um, we are preparing for our spring uh, timber sale bid opening. Our sales will be going out uh, the first or second week in April uh, for the bid opening, uh, probably first week in May. So. Recon is on target. Uh, we did have a little bit of good neighbor authority work done this month. Um, on, on the new contract, we received our final reimbursement for year 22 this month for just under 17,000. That closes out that contract. Uh, Oak Wilt, nothing to report. Mountain bikes, nothing. Um, ATV, UTV, snowmobile trails, we are preparing our grant applications for the April 15th trail aids grant deadline. Um, th this is the funding that Kathy mentioned that pays for the contracting and brushing. So we've got our normal maintenance funds and we have a list of uh, special rehab projects we'll be submitting as well. Uh, also, I didn't include in my report, but we did submit a storm damage grant for the ice storm in December. Uh, this was a special grant offering that the state provided. Um, so we did apply for $74,627 uh, for that work that was done to clear the trails. Um, we haven't heard anything on that. Uh, the deadline was March 1st. So we'll see uh, how it goes, what we get out of that. So they did have AW, the governor's snowmobile rec council did meet yesterday and i heard that meeting went well and i believe we should be getting approved for that okay. but they have one more meeting okay so so that's that's good news so we'll see where we sit on that um otherwise uh, still working on the carbon credit uh, documentation request to get uh get our project up and going um staff did attend a climate adaption workshop from the Wisconsin County Forest Association on February 8th. Uh, that's why I wasn't in attendance at the, the committee meeting last month. Um, so all our staff went for that. That was a requirement for our forest certification. So okay. That's about all I have. Uh so that's six seventy six hundred seventy five thousand year to date. That's that actually puts us like ahead of schedule, right? For our one point eight million yeah we're, it's it's because that's yeah. only that was only for two months basically yep yep so we're we're on target and we'll have a big march trying to clean everything i mean we got a lot of tickets that came in last week so yeah we're we're right where we need to be what's the if we don't get that seventy four thousand dollar grant how bad is that going to be or do you you're confident we will get it you know if if we didn't get it um the way the numbers worked out we would just go into supplemental funding for snowmobile grooming and we would likely get it through supplemental um when this occurred i mean nobody we didn't know if, if the clubs would be able to handle this without burning through their whole maintenance mm -hmm. for the year and we weren't sure what was going to happen with supplemental but just the way the the winter worked out that it could probably be funded that way so i, I don't think we're going to be left left hole in the bag so to speak so okay but it sounds promising that we'll get it 
Any other awesome. questions? Sorry. I'm sorry. We can also apply for aid through the or the right council if we need it, but I think we're we're probably going to be fine. That's the is that the 10 county thing or is that the whole state? No, thing? no, that's similar to the snowmobile rec council and the ORV deals with ATV and UTV, but mm. um, the money that we received from from that because it's two separate grant grant mm. amounts that we get, you know, one for snowmobiling and snowmobile aids and and one for UTV or ATV aids. So they're two separate, mm. but the we should be fine. I think so. Okay. Any questions for Greg on the uh, forest report? If not, we can go to 9C. We have a resolution. Okay. So this is an annual resolution that uh, has to be submitted um, for our trail aids grants. So this is something we do every year that authorizes forestry department to apply for those grants. So we're looking for a... Uh... A motion here in this committee to approve it and then it will go on to the full board if it gets approved is yep. that correct yep so if any, everybody's had time looked at that resolution like greg says we do this every year it's pretty cut and dried um is there a motion i'll move to accept the resolution for all the recreation aids okay we have a motion by mr peters second by mr helwig any further discussion um I don't think we have to real call on this. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. So will that be on the, Lynn, will that be on the agenda for the full board on yeah. next week? Okay. Okay, we have 9D, the DNR forestry report. Yeah, I'm Pat Zimmer here with forestry team leader, filling in for Roy Dubrod for today's meeting. And Roy did submit a report. Um, wasn't going to go through the entire thing, but I think the county forestry department has a copy of it if um, people want to reference it. Um, but one thing I'll mention is that Roy Zubrat did uh, submit a resignation yesterday for his position. So we'll be working with Ro or with Greg here, um, kind of on the continuity of operations, make sure we're still providing the service to the county, and we'll be looking at um, filling that position as soon as we can, hopefully sometime either in may or june we'll get a, a new individual in that position continue so uh this report it talks about the flambeau river uh, ski trails is that the that's the report you're talking about right in the red pine yep, uh, sea yep, demand? yep yeah so i don't understand why ski trails are closed with with all of this with so much snow up in the Flamborough River State Forest. Yeah. Um, and I haven't had time to have to talk to Kyle up there um, to see what they closed off. I don't know if, there was, if that was impacted by logging operations or what that might have been. Mm. Um, I, I don't think there was a plan in place to open up portions of those trails that were closed off. Okay. And then are you uh, pretty familiar with the red pine seed demand? <laughs> Um, just a little bit. We had our, our nursery um, specialist up here a few weeks ago, kind of talking to Roy and I, and, and that there was just going to be a demand for a red pine seed. Um, and I think they were paying $35 a bushel. Okay, that, that's that was my question. Okay. I read through the whole thing. It's fascinating information, but it doesn't say a price in there. So I have no much, you know, how much does a pound of seed cost you know so you're saying that it costs how much for the actual seeds or for the cones well yeah I, so i'm not real familiar with this myself um but the prices that we were given and i guess the major takeaway and, and we could you could dig into this a little bit more is that the price is going up for that so if people have opportunities or they have that resource available um the price for those for the cone is going up so if you can have a way to collect that seed um, the nurseries are, it's, it's in high demand, I guess, right now. So you said $75 a, a bushel, bushel for the cones. I believe that would be for the seed, but I'm not 100% sure to look into that. Probably not. I mean, because yeah, you only get half a pound cones. of seed for a bushel. Yeah, yeah. that's European 50, about 30 years ago. So cool. I, I know the demand's up. So if you've got the means that, they're, they're looking for that and I haven't talked to them as far as what I haven't sold that myself so 
as far as the avenue for getting that going to the nursery. Um, if someone's interested, they can contact me or go through Greg and we can get one of the local folks to look into it, but something to consider. Yeah, it was fascinating information. I didn't know there was such a shortage. Yes. I think on the, uh, just a comment with that candlelight ski event that they had, uh, there are a lot of people that do not ski on that. And so there's a lot of uh, disruption to the trail. So that's probably what the reason why that trail isn't growing, hasn't been growing since that. You mean they're just event. like snowshoeing or something? Or there's snowshoeing or walking, just walking along mm -hmm. the trail. It's a loop mm -hmm. that they have um, down on the flamble there. Yeah, and they've talked about that um, going forward. They might they might end up transitioning it to more of a candlelight walk because that is the primary yeah. use that people do when they come to that candlelight event is walking the trail or snowshoeing it. So it's not really conducive to to skiing. It's not like the you know the ski event, the candlelight one. They have at other places where it's primary focus on skiing. This is more getting people outdoors and utilizing the trail. Yeah, they had one last weekend in Morgan Falls, uh, a candlelight uh, you know hike. Or whatever. There was one guy I saw skiing, but yeah, a couple guys on snowshoes. But the trail was packed down, so most people were just walking. That's good. Yeah, what's up, Andy? Um, for the red pine seed, the, the seeds are sort of the basketball nursery. Is there any seed storage or seed planting about uh, the nursery? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, basketball is one one that we've got. We had the three nurseries at one time that were fully functioning, and we're down to the one. So. Um, I don't know if they're doing if they're taking in seed there possibly, but that's something if you're interested, I could definitely look into and find out more information. I'll talk to you afterwards. Sure. I have one further question on uh, there was an open uh, comment period that ended on February 28th for the uh, the gray wolf. Uh, do you have any information on the next step on that or what the feedback was or? I do not, but definitely could coordinate with Josh here and find out more. Um, haven't been tied into that, so just be able to look into that and find out um, what the next step is. Was that one they had here? Was that it was a week? statewide okay. uh, thing online where you could submit comments um, for, you know, on gray wolf harvesting and numbers and you know. You know, livestock deprivation. It was all kinds of. Uh, it was pretty extensive, and include the full draft, 179 pages of information. Some pretty good information that didn't really seem too uh, biased. You know, one way or the other. It was just presenting facts, which I appreciated. Okay, good. Thanks. Any questions for uh, DNR? If not. Uh, we can go to uh, 10, Zoning Conservation Department. Yeah, as far as the county report, nothing significant to report on that end. I do have some uh, reports from conferences, and I guess I'll just throw them in at, at this point, uh, if that's okay, as opposed to waiting to 12. Yeah. Um, but last week, Tim and Natalie attended the 70th Annual Wisconsin Land and Water Conference held in Wisconsin Dells. Uh, they heard from the keynote speaker, Kurt Mean, for the conservation biologist and professor at UW-Madison. Uh, they gave a presentation on Wisconsin leadership in the conservation field and how it's shaped our relationships with the landscape. Um, this is the first time in over two years that we were able to attend the conference due to COVID. Uh, so it was good to catch up with old colleagues and Natalie was finally able to attend uh, her first um, land and water conference. Uh, so finally putting um, an actual handshake to the faces that she'd seen on Zoom uh, over the last couple of years. So uh, there were seven continuing ed credits uh, that were obtained from attending this conference, um, a variety of sessions that included nitrogen corn fixing, black bear management, animal waste storage, how to talk to landowner and farmers, how to build youth education programs in the county, aquatic invasive species, and what to do when things don't go right during the construction of the cost share projects. Um, we had our Speaking contest um, that we had sent down Brooke Frommel um, from the Hayward area, uh, who um, finished uh, in third place, and also our uh, poster contest also was a third place winner in the 10th to 12th grade. So uh, three third place winners from our area, from our county, uh, from the entire state. 
That's great. I'm sorry, where was that at? Uh, Chula Vista, Wisconsin Dells. Oh, where the Wisconsin Dells. All right. Yeah. Jay, is there any part of the Billy Boy Dam conversation that you could the community say? Or... Yeah, to an extent. So we, we've had some conversations with DNR, uh, specifically from the Whitefish Lake Property Owners Association. They sent a petition to the DNR for an official water level change for uh, the Billy Boy, which affects the lake elevation of Couderay, Grindstone, and Whitefish. Uh, those conversations initially occurred back in like October, and the DNR basically tasked it back to the county to provide flood easements of record. So basically when the dam was first created, you know, the county would have obtained easements to flood people's property to a certain elevation. We thought we found that information and gave it to the DNR to say, hey, we have these flood easements in place. Let's go through the next series of steps to how to get this water level change. DNR came back and said, nope, that's not what we think. We don't think you have flood easements in place. And we're kind of in a stalemate talking with uh, county legal counsel and DNR legal counsel, uh, because I mean, these records are going back the, to the 1930s. I mean, this is when these flood easements were obtained. And you know, the information provided in those files back in the 1930s aren't like today. So it's trying to tie in elevations, trying to tie in uh, all the deed information that shows that the county has the, those flood easements. Um, and that's just one of the series of steps that we need to get through in order to do an official water level change. And, and for those that aren't familiar with the entire aspect of it, it, it was something where uh, due to past administration calculating water levels at the dam versus where they should be further upstream the lake elevation, it's actually dropped the entire system by over a foot in elevation. And there's a lot of individual property owners that are very upset that the water has dropped that much. And now they can't get their boats off of their docks because they don't have enough dock segment to get out to a larger mooring depth. Uh, so it's been a, a headache for the last couple of years. And I thought we were on track to potentially solve some of those headaches. And we are still getting stalemated um, by, by certain avenues. So. We'll continue to kind of work through those those issues and, and see if it goes anywhere. It might be something at some point where if the county wants to continue to work with a water level change, we're going to need to set aside additional funds to do a flood easement study, which could be a considerable amount of money talking about the, the water bodies of grindstone, cougar, and whitefish. And obtain said flood easements. Will that be required if the DNR does not uh, go with these documents you currently have? Yeah, yeah, it would. Um, it, it's one of the nine steps, and I have the list in front of me of the nine steps that you have to get through in order to uh, a petition for an official water level change. So there's an official elevation that's set, a min and a max, and we have to stay within that. If we want to raise that outside of that, we need to go through these nine steps. The first one is obtaining flood easements, because if we're raising the max, we're now flooding people's water or people's land to a higher elevation. Now, you're only talking about an elevation that's only a few inches, but if you look at it across the landscape, it might be 10 feet of their shoreline where we're now taking over with that flood easement. Uh, so it's it's considerable project, and we thought we already had it in place. and that's where we're stalemated and, and still looking into it. Um, you had indicated that the Whitefish Lake property owners, they've been officially petitioned for this? Yep. Are there um, any of those lakes that affected are the property owners who may not be in agreement with raising the water level? Yeah, there's always, yeah, there, there's always two sides to the story. I, just, I would say the majority is wanting the water level higher at this point. There's a few small that want it to where it was back in the 1960s, 1970s, when they used to remember seeing that there was some you know, beach frontage in front of the, the shoreline. Um, and that's where all this had really mm -hmm. came from a couple of years ago and was brought to my attention coming into the Zoning Conservation Administrator that where the previous administration was taking the water levels from did not coincide with that official water level order that was set back in 55. So I wanted, Jay's sent me an update this week, which brought it back up to the yeah. top of my head. But I feel like we're kind of caught in the middle. And we are. We're being pulled from both sides. It's going to cost money. 
to me, I think the DNR is just wanting to be really careful and not get pinched as well, because I don't think they see a lot of official water level change petitions uh, in conversations with Drake of Druckner, DNR, dam safety engineer. I don't think he's ever gone through this process in his five years, six years of working. Um, so they want to make sure everything's in place. I think there's enough information to say that we have flood easements, but it's not documented as such for them to sign off on. It would have to be something that our legal counsel would have to sign off on and say, we think these are adequate enough, proceed DNR, but then that comes back and makes us liable if it's not buttoned up. So just it's yeah, we're in a tough spot right now. And that's as you just preview of coming attractions for the board. Outside of Jay's, Dan is looking into another issue in another area of the county that we're digging back into real estate records pre-1930s, and those records aren't always there, they're not very good, which creates bigger problems for us. Well, they're written in, they're handwritten mm -hmm. in cursive, and you can't, you can't read, read you can't read any of that. <laughs> you know what cursive is? <laughs> okay, after after three or four days of looking, I just came to it. All right, it doesn't sound like it's anything that's like super pressing though, like no. people aren't gonna get, I mean, nothing that, you know, is urgent. Even if everything was in place, any type of official change wouldn't be occurring for this year's water. It would be next year, starting kind of this time, mm -hmm. if these series of events were able to, to fall together. Flood easement is the hardest one at this point, and that's the one we're stalemated on. If this domino piece falls, the rest of them could fall fairly easy. Okay. Any questions for Jay on that? If not, we'll go to Kevin, USDA report. Uh, there's not much happening right now. Um, there's just a couple of days here. Uh, March 15th is the deadline for producers to sign up for agriculture risk coverage and price loss coverage. And then um, March 15th is for non insured crops, the disaster program uh, deadline for all seed, spring seed beans. And then on uh, March 15th again is the, the annual for the crop insurance people. Um, for your local crop insurance, you sign up there, it's the deadline. And then on March 31st is the deadline to apply for marketing assistant loans um, for prior year of RBC, like tweet corn barley. Mm -hmm. So take loans out on that. That's about all that's going on. Okay. Right Any questions for Kevin? If not, we'll go to 10C LCO report. Brian, do you have anything? Sure. Um, just want to let everybody know on February 27th, we received a call from the DNR um, that a mortality alert went off, or it uh, it was alerted that one of the collared elk on the reservation uh, were deceased. The following day, the DNR went with uh, our LC wardens and located it was a deceased cow it, it was determined that the cause of death was a wolf kill. So the DNR took the head, lung, and liver um, and tissues for testing. There wasn't there wasn't any anything salvageable on it. Um, and so today, the my wardens are up there in Clam Lake assisting the DNR with collaring um, some elk that they trapped last night. Um, our snowmobile trails are still in really good condition, according to my wardens. And the last thing that I have is we're starting to put out public notices to the membership and everyone that March 15th deadline to remove ice shacks on the lakes. So that's all I have. Okay. Hey, Brian, are you guys planning to collar any more elk in Sawyer County or just over there in, uh, in in the next county bayfield. bayfield county we're just assisting so it's my understanding that they're uh they're just doing the ones that they caught over in clam lake so but we do have a population of them up on the reservation here at that uh um in fact two years ago i believe uh, we got a call from the dnr we had uh the dnr had to put one down it was the I can't remember what kind of disease it had. It was a diseased young calf that it, DNR had put down. So 
Um, that's the second one that I'm aware of up in that area. Um, and so, yeah, we don't we don't collar anything, uh, but we will assist the DNR in doing it. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Brian? All right, if not, number 11, future agenda items. Nothing. Just maybe yeah. uh, I think you, you know it's comfortable with committee next week. Yes. Okay. Just uh, we have the meeting. Oh yeah. For next week, we've uh, alerted you up for the for prop you. for the Radisson property that you um, set the bid price to one dollar for last month. We've got multiple uh, offers that have come in, so we're sorting those out and have those ready for next week's meeting. Right. So is it? prudent or allowed to discuss that with this committee now before the board meeting or not? I wouldn't since it's on the agenda for next week. And that's a special meeting? Special meeting. Six o'clock next Thursday before the board meeting. When is it? Six o'clock next Thursday before our regular county board meeting. You probably don't need to do it. Yeah, it's for yeah, planning. Yeah, if you, yeah. I don't think you need to be there for it, but it's up to you. Yeah, I know you're on this committee, but you wouldn't be able to vote on 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 it there because that's just for the county board. the county board supervisors, I think. So, yeah, Andy said we're not supposed to discuss it here, but just so everyone's aware, I'm not discussing. I'm just so you're aware of what it is. That property in Radisson uh, was listed at ten thousand dollars. We agreed as a committee to lower the minimum bid to one dollar because it was going to cost forty eight thousand uh to destroy it was the first bid the second bid that came in was sixty thousand to to have it you know removed destroyed <clears throat> the problem is there's been three bids put in uh for that property so i think we need to clarify at some point next week on if the word is is in fact a bid like it would be for an auction and then they take the highest bid or if it's just here's the minimum price as soon as we get the minimum then we can sell it so that's going to be just so you're aware of what's going on for next week we're going to be discussing that and figuring out what to do with the full board for that property because we have three i won't even say the word bid we have three offers uh for that one property so we just need to sort that out yeah. we'll call them it's three applications to purchase but that's that's what the form is. That's what I this just came up yesterday, so we haven't even had a chance to look. There, there is a we'll be able to give you all the information next week. The timeline of receipts and what's on the property is going to be destroyed. It's a uh, old commercial building. building. I don't know what it was, but it was a hotel at one time. It was a hotel. Uh, my only suggestion is I don't know. If the village of Radisson's president is involved in any of these conversations because if it comes down to um like a unsightly building or a building that needs to be demoed the county doesn't have any authority to mandate that because it's in the village proper but the village may have ordinances that could condemn it for demolition and I feel like the village president should probably be at that table okay I don't think so because it's not <clears throat> we're selling it as yeah, is. we're not concerned about the demo at this point. We're concerned about uh who is gonna be the rightful <clears throat> or the proper recipient of which application is gonna get approved of the three is what it's probably gonna come down to. So any any issues with that? We're selling it as is it's the buyer's responsibility to verify those things. Yep. Okay, anything else? Future gen items. Number 12, correspondence reports, conferences, and meetings. We already heard the uh, J from, that was called the uh, Forest Zoning Conservation Meeting? Land and Water. Land Water Conservation? Land water con conference. Okay. Did you have anything additional on that? Or is there anybody else who attended any uh, meetings or conferences or any other reports? What we heard from Greg, too. Okay. Um, there's nothing else then, we're adjourned. <laughs>